Welcome back to Switzerland on Australia's business channel. With the local stock market under pressure from concerns about China driving share prices of our miners in the wrong direction, we have Roger Montgomery, the Chief Investment Officer of Montgomery Investment Management, for his assessment of just how concerned we should be. Welcome, Roger. How are you, Peter? Very good. Now, I know you've, you've well, in recent years, you haven't been a great fan of resource stocks. Correct. So, you'd be, well, I wouldn't say you'd be happy, but your, your stocks will be heading in the right direction. What's going on with resource stocks? So, so it, it all relates to China mm. and fears that China now not only is slowing down, but the deterioration of its foreign exchange reserves means that it can no longer prop up other countries with purchases of their bonds. Mm. Because their foreign exchange reserves have declined, mm. it means money's flowing out now. All the hot money that was flowing into China is now flowing out. Everyone's afraid that it's slowing down, and it's slowing down very quickly. Now, there are a lot of economists who predicted this mm -hmm. and who've said that China may stabilise at about 5% mm -hmm. per annum. Mm -hmm. This year's more likely to be, I think, 7%, mm -hmm. um, but many analysts are saying 5%. Now, we've obviously been on the program here talking mm -hmm. about this and elsewhere, talking about our concerns for the iron ore price and our concerns for Australia because of the possibility of China slowing down. Mm. So, so but, the, the, but that's, that's the pivotal now. one. That's the pivotal issue. Um, and until about a week ago, China wasn't thought to be slowing down. Then the figures came yeah. out. It was 7.7 .7 rather than 8, which wasn't, bi wasn't a big difference. W why have people... Okay, because the, the, the bigger issue, Peter, mm. is that China's foreign reserves, yeah. and when they build up those foreign exchange reserves, when yeah. they've built up, they have been a great predictor of booms in stock markets around the world and economic growth. Mm. And when they've pulled back, the last time they pulled back was just before the GFC. Yeah. The time before that was before the tech bubble burst, mm. and now it's pulled back again. Mm. So growth in foreign exchange reserves is now about zero. Mm. And that's a huge problem because their foreign exchange reserves pretty much overwhelm everyone else's. Yeah. So it's more important what's going on there than what's going on elsewhere in the world. Mm. And that's why we've talked for so long on the blog and here on the program mm. about watching out for BHP. And there are other fund managers, as you know, who liked BHP at $40 and $45 and had mm. valuations of $50 and so forth. And we've always had valuations of under 30. And here we are just about to have a two in front of BHP. Mm. So, you know, it'd be interesting I'd be interesting to review it again if it goes to $25 or, or, or something and, even lower. And so it's not just how fast China grows, the, the foreign exchange reserves. Now, those reserves have clearly have been affected by the fact that China is not exporting as well as it, as it has not been because Europe has been a bit of a basket case and Europe has been an important trade customer. Correct. Too. Well, what's been happening is, is China, has, China has used its foreign exchange, has, has built these foreign exchange reserves. Yeah. And then because those foreign exchange reserves have been built up, because all the money's been flowing into the country, mm. they've printed money because they don't want an appreciation of the one. Yeah. And so they've printed money and they've used that printed money to then go and buy bonds. Mm. Now, they don't need to do that anymore. Mm. And so if they're not going to do that, if they don't need to print money and they don't need to do that and they want to cool their economy anyway, mm. then what does that mean for global growth? And, and so we've got this deflation scenario or sentiment towards deflation yep. now hitting markets. This is something we've been concerned about for a while. And now everyone's starting to think about it. You've seen gold plunge. That makes sense if you're thinking about deflation. Mm. You've seen interest rates in Germany, the UK and the United States go down. And mm. everyone thought that we've seen the bottom already. and They've gone even lower. Yeah. And so everyone's worried about deflation. And that's a really bad outcome for the world. Now, I'm not suggesting that's what we're going to have. And no. I'm mildly optimistic. Con considering all the money that's been put out there, you kind of think deflation shouldn't be the primary concern. It no. should be inflation, shouldn't it? And gold should be going up. It's, but it's not happening, yeah. and that's the big fear. Yeah. So, so all I'm doing is describing what's going on in the markets now yeah. so that everyone understands Yeah, because you, you wouldn't even pass yourself as being a gold expert. It's just or you, an economist. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, but you, you wouldn't you, employ you, any. But you basically, uh, yeah, you, you've got to look at commodities because it has a direct impact on the intrinsic value of companies that you either want to buy or... or well, you're... here's the thing that we're really worried about. It's foreign flows, Chinese flows into Australia, yeah. and those foreign flows have been supporting our capital account surplus. Yes. And we need a capital account surplus to offset our current account deficit in the yeah. balance of payments. Yeah. And because we've got this situation where we're always importing, the value of what we're importing is much higher than the value of what we're exporting because the government's done nothing about in incentivising manufacturing and innovation in this country. 
actually saw we're doing, uh, as you heard recently, we're described as a quarry, mm. and I reckon we're a quarry <coughs> at the end of a cul-de-sac. So now, what if we don't get those foreign flows from China? What mm. does that mean for Australia? Well, the dollar will come, come down. The dollar comes down. And that's, we own CSL, we own Cochlear. Uh, we've been buying Cochlear yeah. recently. Um, we've, uh, we, we own CSL, we own businesses, uh, flight centre, mm. businesses that have overseas growth potential mm. because if the Aussie dollar comes down mm. then that's going to be beneficial to us because their profits when translated into Australian dollars will be much higher. Without a doubt. Um, let's look at a company like Newcrest. Sure. Because you I once... I laughed off stage yeah. on this program yeah. when I said... No, not this program. Not this program, this, the, the, this the, network. The, 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 um, your money, your The call. blokes are coming after me. Yeah, yeah they money, laughed at you. They I did. laugh at you for other reasons but not for that. Well, I didn't know that. I'll let my mum know that. That's her <laughs> fault. Um, so, so Newcrest was trading last year or the year before when we were talking about it, forty-four dollars or yep. something like that, at yep. forty dollars. And I, you know, they went around the table. What yeah. do you think of this stock? And I said it's the most expensive gold company in the world, yep. and my valuation is about fifteen dollars. Yeah, so fifteen eighty nine to that. Yeah, and everyone laughed. And yep. you know, you could probably go onto YouTube and find it where you know, Roger, type in Roger Montgomery um, Newcrest, and yep. you'll probably find it. But um, uh, you know, here it is. And, and what this tells me is that it's really important to be patient as an investor. Right? Now, I don't know what's going to happen to the gold price. Mm. And if the gold price continues to go down, well, Newcrest will go down even more. Mm. Unfortunately, so many investors own Rio, BHP and Newcrest mm. because that was, they were, they're the default stocks that brokers put people into mm. if they want to give them exposure to materials and gold. Yeah, yeah. But they've been expensive and the outlook has been very uncertain. Mm. But the, the irony is then that if you went into these stocks at higher prices, maybe it's the time to dollar cost average if you're a long-term investor because they are inherently good companies, but as you would say, they simply the market price was too high compared to their yeah. intrinsic value. Look, I don't, I'm not going to predict the share, the share price, but no. what I will say is the iron ore price for 30 or 40 years, up to 2004, traded at between $10 and $20 a tonne. Mm. Then between 2004 and 2011, six or seven years, it went from 20 bucks a tonne to $187 a tonne. Yeah. And people thought $100, $140, that's the new normal. Yeah. The new normal is way back, you know, 20 years ago. That's where, it's tr that's where it could trade again. Mm. Now, I'm not predicting iron ore is going to go to $20, yep. but if it went to $50 or $60, what does that make um, what does that make BHP and Rio and Fortescue Metals worth? Mm. And then you start to think, okay, if they go below those levels, they're looking cheap. Mm. But I don't think we're there yet. Okay, before you go, mm. is there a stock you like? You've told a stock you don't like. <laughs> well, every, every uh, time I'm on the shop, I, I know you're officer, but is there, uh, is there a surprise one? Well, you know, in doing your little calculations or your big calculations. Well, hey, I'll give you one. one. IMF. Yeah. IMF is a okay. business that is misunderstood by the market. Yeah. IMF is uh, uh, chaired by Rob Ferguson, who's ex-BT. Uh, yeah. um, some of the smartest guys in the legal fraternity, I, I know them, yeah. and they reckon the people at IMF are the smartest. Yeah. So there's a business that is absolutely fantastic because you've got really smart guys who are working out which litigation to fund, which cases to fund, class actions mm. typically, and they're like an investment committee in a funds management business. Mm. They've got $70 million of cash. They could run that business for two years without getting any income in. They could keep running it. You've sold got, us. Right. They've got time, a billion mate. dollars as well. Fantastic. Of jobs seen, coming. seen a couple of weeks' time. All right, mate. That's Roger Montgomery.